So far, we've seen how to find the electron configuration of an element. And to do this, we used the Pauli exclusion principle, which told us that each orbital can contain a maximum of two electrons. But why can only two electrons occupy each orbital? Well, to find out, we first need to look into another peculiar property of electrons. Now, since 1926, when Schrödinger unearthed the quantum secrets of the electron, many other scientists have also investigated electrons to try and figure out how they behave. For instance, can they spin like a ball? Well, we can't just look at them spinning. We can't even see them. So scientists had to find other clever ways of testing whether electrons could spin. For instance, by comparing them to things that we actually can see. Like a charged metal ball. Now, if you take a magnet, like this, and fire a charged metal ball through it, the charged metal ball will pass straight through. But, if the ball's spinning, it's deflected. If the ball's spinning in this direction, it's deflected to here. If it's spinning in this direction, it's deflected to here. And if it was spinning even faster in either direction, it's deflected even more. And so, if you fire thousands of charged metal balls through a magnetic field, some spinning fast, some spinning slow, some spinning in one direction, some spinning in the other direction, some not spinning at all, and marked where each of them ended up hitting the wall behind, then you'd see a pattern like this. A big smeared line. Now, at the time, scientists thought electrons were also charged and spherical. And so, they thought if they did a similar experiment on electrons, firing them through a magnetic field at a detector, maybe, just maybe, it'd give them some information about whether electrons spin. If electrons did spin, they thought they'd see a pattern like this, similar to the one they saw for the charged metal balls. And if they didn't spin, they thought they'd see a pattern like this. But actually, as we've seen many times before, trying to predict the behaviour of electrons based on things we can see never tends to be correct. And in fact, neither of those two things happened. Two dots appeared on the detector, one up and one down. And the scientists who conducted this experiment were baffled. It was as if all the electrons were spinning, they thought. And they were all spinning at the same speed. With half spinning in one direction and getting deflected to here, and half spinning in the opposite direction and getting deflected to here. It was as if the electrons were restricted to only two possible spins, just like they're restricted to a few possible energies. Now, the scientists called these electrons, the ones that got deflected to here, spin up, and represented them like this. And they called these electrons, the ones which hit the detector here, spin down, and represented them like this. Since 1926, loads of experiments like the one we've just looked at have been done, which all confirm this weird property of electrons which we call spin. And our understanding of spin has led to some amazing advancements in technology, like MRI scanners in hospitals and NMR spectroscopy, which we'll look at later in this course. But there's just one fundamental problem with spin. Its name. You see, electrons aren't actually spinning. If they were, scientists worked out they'd have to be spinning unbelievably fast. In fact, to be deflected by this much, the electrons would need to have been spinning faster than the speed of light. And that just isn't possible. Clearly, something else, some other weird quantum effect, is what's causing this separation, not electron spinning. But the name just stuck, and we still use it today, even though it's kind of confusing and misleading. So, to sum up, all electrons have a property which we call spin, even though they aren't actually spinning. And any electron must either be spin up, which we represent like this, or spin down, which we represent like this.